Hello, amazing, beautiful artists. It's Kelly Folsom here, and I want to welcome you back to another Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm super excited because here we are at the end of the year, closing out 2022. It's after Christmas and before New Year's. Um, and moving into 2023. And I have a very important topic to discuss with all of you today as we are considering all of the things that we want to let go of in 2022 and all of the new things and the fresh clean slate and sort of the new beginning and the rebirth that we really get to have at any time. But there is a great ritual and a, a great ritual in kind of crossing of a threshold, so to speak, whenever we move from one year to the next, right? Um, so the new year always brings up this theme of, you know, reinvention. Okay. So today's topic subjects on how to become the artist that you want to be, right? How to reinvent yourself as an artist, right? And step into that artist that you have always wanted to become. So at the very end, I'm going to be giving you my number one most important tip in order to do this. Um, in my 15 years, um, of be, becoming an artist whenever I was 28 years old, deciding to go to art school and to do this thing called becoming an artist, right? This, I've learned so many lessons about this. So many, so many lessons and hard lessons along the way. And I've also helped a lot of other artists. I've mentored a lot of other artists along the way since 2011 and especially intensely mentored artists to go from, say, just creating art, even just being able to create art as a hobby and then transitioning into going pro as an artist. So I've been doing that intensely over the last four years. And there's so many things that I've witnessed and seen that I myself faced as a young 28 year old, right? And I've seen other women who are um, in, uh, let's say uh, their 50s, 40s, you know, reinventing themselves as artists, just like I was doing at 28. And I've seen both of us face the same exact obstacles, the same blind spots, the um, same limitations that we would put on ourselves that would really hold us back. And so none of these uh, lies and limitations and, and uh, boundaries and limits are anything new. Like most of us are going to deal with them and face them, right? Um, but the few of us that actually uh, don't believe in the lie and actually don't give up and keep moving forward, like myself and many others that I have worked with and known, are, will be the ones who will have more success in their art, right? In their, in their art life, in their art career, and therefore have more fulfillment. So, um, why solve this problem? Well, because I believe that your soul will not settle for a compromise. I know my cert mine certainly would not. And so, you know, if we don't step into our full potential, right, and start the becoming of it, then basically that call is just going to keep knocking, knocking, knocking on your door. And I also am a firm believer that art definitely makes the world a better place. And of course, human beings living in their full potential and their full purpose also makes the world a better place. So that's why it's important to address this if you are kind of bumping your head up against the wall with this issue right now in your life, right? Settling for less, quitting, giving up on your dream of being an artist. And maybe you even are a full-time artist, but you know that you are not operating at your full level, your full potential, right? So <laughs> if that even is um, important to address as well, um, because we don't just wanna be plateauing and coasting in our life, we want to be thriving. We want to be so full of light, love, life and energy that it just, you know, affects everybody around us, right? And we want to experience the fulfillment of that growth and of that abundance and of that, you know, strength. So 
Um, so the number one thing I would say when it comes to really stepping into becoming the artist that you've always wanted to be is number one, just to believe in it, right? Believe that it's important, believe that it's possible for you, um, believe that it matters, believe that your dream does matter, right? And then just say, saying yes to it, saying yes to it and taking action and moving forward whatever that action might look like for you. It could look like, for me, it was a matter of like just making the choice internally that I was going to attempt to get into an art college, okay? That was just my, what came to me as something to do because I was like, okay, in this world, you're supposed to get a degree so you can have a job. So I guess if I'm gonna be an artist, I gotta have a job, you know, which is not true at all. But at the time, that's what I thought. And so I thought, well, I gotta get a degree. As soon as I made that commitment to um, follow through on that, I made my first decision of like going back out, buying my first sketchbook, starting to draw again. I didn't actually go straight to art college from there. I started researching art colleges. I went out, bought my that first sketchbook, started drawing again. So it could just be even just one small action, right? Like one small baby step that that is moving you towards that intention of who you want to become, right? Because a lot of times where we're starting from is so far away from where we want to be and it can seem insurmountable or seem like it's going to take a really long time. And I'm here to tell you it can actually go a lot faster um, and it will go a lot faster as long as you're staying committed to that intention of who you want to become and continue to take those baby steps and those small actions. So today, just checking in with yourself, getting quiet and asking like, what is one small action, one small step that I can take that will commit me to the person that I want to become, to the artist that I want to become. Okay. And that could be signing up for a class, for example. Um, you know, for example, right now I have a free five day still life painting challenge. Maybe it's popping in your name and email on that. Digging, digging into those videos and start starting painting this week, right? Like that's something that's absolutely free that doesn't even cost you anything, but it's still an action, right? It's still something that you have to follow through. And there's always a cost to that, a cost of time, a cost of energy. Um, so that's the number one thing I would say is believe it and then take quick, swift action as soon as possible today within 24 hours, okay? Um, number two to becoming the artist that you always um, dream of becoming is to stop criticism, to stop negative self-talk, right? To stop that inner critic. Um, now, listen, we all have self-doubt, right? Um, and there's a certain amount of self-doubt that I think is healthy self-doubt. But I don't know how many times that I've been, I myself have experienced this where I have just not um, thought that I was good enough. Even whenever I was in art school, I was constantly comparing myself to other artists and um, constantly doubting my abilities and thinking, you know, I'm really probably not going to make it, you know, I'm going to come out of this thing with like a hundred thousand dollars debt. I suck at painting. I suck at drawing. You know, it was like, it was just a constant barrage, uh, internally in my mind of just telling myself that I was not good enough. Now I will say for me that I was grateful because eventually somebody on the external in the external world mirrored that back to me. And that was, and that will happen. Like whatever's going internally for you will mirror itself externally. And for me, this was really a blessing in disguise because it was a professor at the art college in my fourth year that just was so toxic cr criticism, so full of toxic criticism, not just for me, but for other artists and you know, and she ended up telling me that I didn't deserve a degree after four years of going to art school and like, but really truly busting my ass. Like you guys, I worked so, I did work so hard. I've always been a hard worker. It's something that my parents instilled in us. And, um, and so, but it's the funny thing is, is like, 
whatever I was doing to myself internally, somebody was just reflecting that back to me externally. And that just will happen. And the funniest part about that is, is like as soon as somebody else on the outside tried to do that to me, all of a sudden I saw them as like a bully. And then I saw them bullying other people and I got pissed off, right? And I was like, screw you. I will show you how great I am. Like, just watch this, you know, like just watch me. You think I'm not going to be a successful artist? You just watch me make it happen, you know? So it kind of stirred up like this uh, righteous anger inside of me. And I even tried to like, uh, stand up for some of the other students. And then I stood up for myself, you know, and I wrote a letter to the, the head chair of the department, to the dean, to the president, and just said, like, I will not have any more meetings with this person, right? So it's fascinating how we can just beat the heck out of ourselves internally. Um, but then when somebody else tries to do it to us, um, not always, but sometimes what it will trigger is like, no, I am good enough. And how dare you talk to me that way, <laughs> you know? And so for me, it did open my eyes in a big way to how I talked to myself and how I treated myself. And this was back in 2011. Now that wasn't the end of that lesson. It still took me multiple years to um, be really kind to myself, you know, to um, speak well of myself, to celebrate myself whenever I did good things. And that's something I still have to really work on to practice. Um, but what's interesting is because my internal dialogue has shifted so much, the reflection on the external dialogue that I receive from the outer world reflects that and it's very positive. So like I don't get nearly as many rejections, criticisms, you know, haters, you know, as I used to say five years ago, 10 years ago. And back then, whenever those things would come in, it would, I would really, they would really bother me because I believed that there was some amount of truth to them, you know? So I would be like, see, you know, somebody found me out. You know, it's kind of like, see, somebody uh, was smart enough to see through my facade that, you know, I'm not really all that great or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and now at this stage in my life, I'm like, no, I know exactly who I am and I stand strong and I stand firm in that. And I'm also like so freaking open to change, you know, and so humble about who I am as well. So it's an interesting, you know, uh, see, there's a seeming contradiction there, but it's not. So anyways, um, so that inner criticism though, that will stop you faster than anything. That will hinder your growth faster than anything. Not only because you're doing it to yourself, but also because it's gonna end up reflecting in your outer world. And you know, what's fascinating too is sometimes we can actually have this huge win, right? Like this big success. But because we still have that internal self-doubt, like that we're not worthy of it or deserving of it, somebody on the external usually will be like, come in and like, you know, pop your balloon or take the wind out of your sails, so to speak. Like maybe all of a sudden, some, all of a sudden somebody comes in and is all of a sudden really nasty to you, you know, or whatever. And it is, that is just the external reflection of what's, what's going on, like what you're kind of pressing within yourself emotionally. And so it's a really great opportunity. Again, I call them blessings in disguise, right? Because it's a really great opportunity to say, where, where is this in me? Like where, especially if you're letting it in, right? If you're taking it personally, if you're very hurt by it, um, you know, where is this within me? Show me what still is there that needs to be healed, what still needs to be forgiven. Um, sometimes we just, we had a lot of toxic criticism as children, or we watched our mother or father or uh, somebody in our life be very critical of themselves and possibly of others, right? So sometimes it's just a matter of like really going inside and looking at those things and, and forgiving those parts of ourselves and forgiving those people who taught us that that was the way to be, right? Okay, so that's number two, stop negative self-talk, talk, you know, and get curious about it. I would say like, we, we can't, we have to heal it 
I feel like we have to heal it. We have to, you know, transform it and transmute it. You can just go, I will not talk to myself negative anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know. Have you ever tried to do that? I've tried to do that. It doesn't really work. <laughs> you know, so for me, I have to kind of understand where did this come from? What has been the purpose that it has served for me in my life? How have I used it to play small, to get a, a approval from others, to be liked by others? You know, how have I used this as a protective device, um, as a way to get love, right? Like, were you um, possibly uh, had to be appear less intelligent or appear less talented than you were because maybe you had a sibling who wasn't, you know, as smart as you or as talented as you. And, you know, uh, maybe you felt like you had to like play it down around them. Okay. The most important one, though, I would say is identity shape shifting, right? Like shifting your identity. Um, this is huge. Who I was in 2007 is like light years away from whenever I entered art school from who I am now in 2022, right? And what I have learned is that I have always had to step into that future self first, in steps of faith, right? Taking those actions of faith and moving forward, trusting that I will be met with the skills that I need, with the people that I need, with the tools that I need, with the grace and the mercy and the opportunities that I need in order to grow into that person that I'm wanting to become. Um, and also allowing myself to let go of past identities, right? Um, the more we try to cling to past identities, the harder it is for us to step into the new identity that we are, are claiming that we want to embody, right? So this is really important, especially right now, as we are moving into closing out 2022, moving into 2023, right? Like what are, what past identity, even from this year, are you going to let go of? Are you going to leave behind you, right? Um, and what new identity is so that you can step into this new identity that you want for yourself in 2023. And really watching how you, watching the ways in which you firm up that old identity, right? So I don't believe that personality or identity is fixed. I feel like it is always evolving. We're always growing. We're always adapting. So even people who knew me pre-pandemic 2019, it's like, I'm not even that same person anymore. Although in their minds, they might have a fixed picture of who they think I am, right? But I have grown so much and evolved so much since 2019. Um, so, so I'm not even the same person at all. <laughs> you know, it's fascinating. Um, I am more of, you know, my highest self, my truest self. And I feel like that that's really what all of us are moving towards. It's like moving away the wound from the wounded self, sort of the ego self, moving more towards our purpose and towards our highest selves. And it's not always easy work, right? So really watching things like, um, oh, saying things like, oh, I'm such a Luddite, you know, um, or I'm not good at this, or I'm not good at that, you know, or um, perhaps reaffirming past identities that no longer serve you, that are not going to serve you to get to your new identity. So I highly recommend that you begin to do some um, writing processes. I'm a huge journaler. I'm constantly writing about like, who is it? Who is it that I'm wanting to become? Who is she? And I really write about it so that I can get to know her, so I can feel her in my body and in my heart and my mind. You know, this is my future self. This is how she feels every day. This is what she's accomplishing. This is how she's affecting people around here. This is how she's giving back to other people, right? Like this is the quality of life that she wants to have, the experience that she wants to have. And in order to have that, you know, like, how does she show up? Um, how does my future self show up uh, versus how my past self has shown up or how my current self has shown up? So I encourage you to really ask those questions, go deep with them, journal about them, creatively visualize yourself as that future self, right? Creatively visualize your current self merging with that future self. Picture who you are today 
I mean, everything, like even your negative habits that maybe you don't like that you're seeking to change and who you're wanting to become and how she's showing up and how she wants to be and, and maybe the awards she's receiving, the paintings she's selling, um, the classes that she's filling, you know, um, anyways, the joy that she's experiencing and visually, you know, merge those two people because they're both you, right? And, and merge them together into one, right? Um, and then I think too, forgiveness is a huge piece of letting go. If you're carrying any shame, any um, uh, feel like you've made any mistakes even this year, right? Um, really being willing to let it go, to release it, to forgive it, you know, forgive yourself, forgive anybody else who may have wronged you, um, who may have taken advantage of you, who maybe had said that they were going to do something and did not follow through. I know this has been an experience for me this year too, um, but forgiveness is a huge part of being able to move forward in life, right? And it will just open up the doors for so many opportunities for you. So let me know in the comments below, or by sending me an email, info at artlifewithkelly, K-E-L-L-I dot com. Um, and let me know what you're ready to let go of, who you are looking forward to becoming. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what your hopes and dreams are for yourself as an artist, what your goals are as we're moving into 2023. Um, and more importantly than even just your goals, but like what is your intention of who you want to become, right? What's your intention? What's your theme? for 2023. Um, looking forward to hearing from you. And also you can check out all the links that we have for you below with um, any of the free opportunities and also the Art Life School link if you're interested in signing up for that. Um, we will have a goal setting ceremony on January 6th. I'm super excited for that. So just check out all the links for all of the resources, resources I have available for you. And I will see you in 2023.